How did the small state of the Ottomans become a vast empire? Why was the Blue Mosque considered a masterpiece? And why did the crescent moon specifically become a symbol of Islam? Let's figure out what's in the history of the Ottomans a little faster than over 600 years. Once a flourishing empire, Byzantium noticeably weakened and lost its significance by the 11th century. A massive bureaucratic apparatus and corruption virtually eroded imperial authority from the grassroots to the emperor himself. The role of the emperor became so insignificant that he could easily be replaced or even killed. Furthermore, strained relations with the Western world and the loss of trading influence in the Mediterranean put Byzantium in a vulnerable position. The Seljuks, predecessors to the Ottomans, seized lands from Byzantium, forming the Anatolian Sultanate. By the early 14th century, this Sultanate became significant, but later fragmented into Beyliks pursuing independence. One of the Beyliks that gained independence was ruled by Osman I. Legend has it that the ruler saw a crescent moon in a dream, stretching from one end of the earth to the other, taking it as a good sign. The Bey made the crescent the symbol of his dynasty, which eventually became the symbol of Islam, contrasting the Christian cross. Even today, with the crescent adorning the flags of many Muslim nations, not all followers of this religion agree to consider it their symbol. For example, Shiite Iranians view the crescent, like any image, as pure idolatry. In short, Osman's dream didn't disappoint, and he set out to bring his vision to life. His descendants carried on, and by 1396, the Ottoman state had grown immensely in size. During this time, the Ottomans captured Bursa, subdued the strategically important fortress of Kimp, conquered a large portion of Thrace, and achieved victory against Serbian forces at the Battle of Kosovo. They also defeated Hungarian and Venetian troops near Nicopolis. After the significant battle, Sultan Bayezid I felt confident enough to move towards Constantinople and conquer the Byzantine capital. The plan to conquer Constantinople was delayed due to an attack by Tamerlane, the leader of the Turkic people on the Ottoman Empire. Bayezid I had to defend existing territories instead of expanding them. Tamerlane's and Bayezid's armies clashed in a fierce battle near Ankara in the middle of summer 1402. The Ottomans lost and their ruler was captured. After this incident, the Ottoman territory struggled to establish unified authority due to fragmentation, leading to the loss of significant territories like Thessaloniki, Macedonia and Kosovo. Bayezidai died as a prisoner, and his sons divided power among themselves. In the end, Mem I emerged stronger and fortunate enough to unite the country and ascend the throne as the sole ruler in 1413. The Ottoman army initially consisted of cavalry. Later, they formed infantry units armed with bows and arrows called azebs. In the 14th century, elite infantry called Janissaries emerged, initially armed with bows, but later equipped with firearms and sabers. The army's success depended largely on skilled commanders who could strategically deploy troops, allocate forces, and organize attacks. The first ten rulers of the Ottoman Empire, from Osman Ghazi to Suleiman I, personally participated in military campaigns. This tradition was broken by Sultan Selim II, who observed his army's actions from afar and never even smelled gunpowder. Mehmed's successors continued to strengthen the empire, with Murad II achieving great success. His son Mem II first defeated Hungarian and Wallachian forces near Varna, allowing the Ottomans to dominate the Balkans for centuries. His son went further to secure his throne, introducing a bloody tradition of executing all throne contenders by the Sultan's hand. This cruel practice was abolished only after 200 years. After ascending the throne, Mem II set his sights on capturing Constantinople. Day and night, he obsessed over military strategies and siege engines, both inside and outside his palace, determined to conquer the city by any means necessary. He built hundreds of ships, 
and amassed a colossal army to besiege Constantinople, achieving the long-awaited Muslim victory over Christians. The Prophet Muhammad himself predicted this event, stating that Constantinople would be conquered. How magnificent is the leader who conquers it, and how splendid is the army that captures it. After conquering it, Memd fortified the city with stronger walls and gained total control over ship movements between the Black Sea and the Mediterranean. The city itself became the capital of the Ottoman Empire. The magnificent Topkapi Palace was built there, named after the Canning Gate, as a cannon shot marked every time the Sultan left his residence. Traveller Theophile Gauthier, who was fortunate enough to visit, described the magnificence of the Top Copy Palace. He mentioned that the Sultan's chambers were rich in expensive wood, intricate carvings, and beautiful wrought iron elements. The palace's windows offered breathtaking views, unmatched by panoramas, in front of any other world monarch's palaces. It might seem like the Ottoman Empire reached its peak under Sultan Selim I and his son, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. However, the empire's zenith came during Suleiman's rule. Over 20 years, colossal successes were achieved, defeating the Safavid Empire ruling Iran and nearby lands, annexing Egyptian territories for access to the Red Sea, capturing the impregnable Belgrade, subduing Hungary, Chechia, and Croatia, farming vassal states in Moldavia, Wallachia, Transylvania, and solidifying authority in Mesopotamia. In honor of this, Suleiman the Magnificent ordered the construction of the legendary mosque, showcasing the vast and formidable Ottoman Empire. The Suleimani Mosque, which stands to this day, over 450 years, this area has experienced nearly a hundred earthquakes with a magnitude of up to seven, Yet the Istanbul Sanctuary continues to delight residents and visitors alike. Returning to the 16th century, the Ottomans sought further conquests in Europe, aligning with French forces. They waged war against Austria, facing defeats into major battles. They conquered Nice and then Corsica, nearly subjugating Hungary and establishing dominance over the Mediterranean. By the mid-16th century, during Suleiman the Magnificent's rule, the Ottoman Empire's population exceeded 15 million. Europeans feared Turkish conquests and sought to unite against them for defense. In the 1570s, the Holy League formed, uniting Catholic countries like Malta, Spain, Genoa, Venice, and others against the Ottomans. They resisted in the Battle of Lepanto, turning back the enemy fleet. However, the Ottomans quickly recovered, continued their victorious march, and forced the Venetians to cede Cyprus. By the 17th century, the empire's population had nearly doubled, territories expanded, and regions like Crete and Cyprus were incorporated. Baghdad was never lost, but eventually, Europeans gathered strength and resisted Ottoman advances. Faced with his failures, Ahmed I remembered that no mask had been built in 40 years. He decided to construct the world's finest mask to please Allah. When the construction of the Blue Mask was completed, it turned out that the greatest sanctuary in the Islamic world, the Masjid al-Haram Mask in Mecca, now had the same number of minarets as the Sultan Ahmed Mask. This was seen as sacrilege. To appease the Arabs, it was proposed to build seven more minarets, so their mask would surpass all existing structures once again. And this was done. From the late 17th to the early 19th century, the Ottoman Empire was almost constantly at war, with little success and a dwindling treasury. Taxes needed replenishing, so they resorted to collecting taxes from bribes. Corruption reached unprecedented levels, with bribes solving everything. Imagine, the country's budget relied on 15, to 20% from bribes. They even established a separate department to calculate who paid what and how much bribe tax was owed. King Charles XII of Sweden, often defeated by the Russians, encouraged Ottoman ruler Ahmed II to wage war against Russia. In the first battle in 1711, the Ottomans won, 
taking Azov Fortress and control of the Azov Sea from Russia. However, they later had to sign a treaty with the Austro-Hungarians, losing significant lands and halting their victorious march through Europe. Russia couldn't accept the loss of Azov. In 1739, they recaptured the fortress, despite initial defeat. This marked a series of losses for the Ottomans, including the northern Black Sea, Crimea, Kirk, lands beyond the Dniester River, parts of the North Caucasus. Furthermore, Catherine II gained the right for Russian ships to freely pass through the Black Sea Straits, which was humiliating for the Ottomans. Sultan Selim III tried to fix things by modernizing the army, improving education, and changing the tax system. However, his reforms faced resistance from the Janissaries, leading to his overthrow and later assassination. Amidst this, nationalist sentiments grew among the population. Many people sought independence from the Ottoman Empire, leading to the formation of full-fledged states like Serbia, Romania, Moldavia, Bulgaria, Montenegro, and Wallachia. Control over Cyprus and later Egypt shifted to the British. Tunisia was taken by the French. Greece gradually gained autonomy, and European armies surpassed the Ottomans in military technology, signaling the need for reorganizing the Turkish military system. The Janissaries resisted all changes, staging rebellions and refusing to serve. As a result, they were brutally eliminated, and the Ottoman army came to be composed of mercenaries. In the 19th century, the Ottoman Empire experienced a profound decline. By 1922, almost all European and North African territories were lost. A series of political events unfolded, ultimately leading to the overthrow of the Sultan. A new parliament was convened with Sultan Abdul Hamid II as the new head. Despite pressures from Russia and other powers, Abdul Hamid II imposed a dictatorial regime, disregarding the constitution. The so-called Young Turks began a struggle to overthrow the monarchy and reform the state. They advocated for Turkey for Turks and eventually succeeded in placing Mem V on the throne. Following defeats in the Balkan Wars, Turkey sought revenge with German support in World War I. They attacked Russian Black Sea cities, but faced strong resistance, especially on the Caucasus front. Fearing Armenian support for Russia, the Turks initiated the Armenian Genocide in eastern Anatolia, resulting in about 1.5 million casualties. The once diverse Ottoman Empire was reduced to a mere name territories became independent or fell under British and French control. The former empire ceased to exist, replaced by the new entity called the Republic of Turkey, with Mustafa Kemal Atatürk as its president. Thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel for future videos.